removing 12 leaf tail geckos into bin enclosures. Yep, they're leaving their bioactive ones. Stay tuned to know why. So we have our huge stack of enclosures ready to roll and all the leaf tail geckos removed from the enclosures there are in their cups from catching them overnight. I know, you're not happy, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead now and move them into these bins and we'll have a little look at each one as we do it too. All right. All right, so here's a handsome male. You can see he looks pretty great. Hey, buddy. Wanna go home? This is your new home for now. There you go. All right. Who shall we do next? Let's see. In here, 
We have a lovely darker female. Oh, careful girl. There we go. Perfect. Now the male, this guy's really pretty. I'm not sure if you can make him out exactly, but he looks really nice. I mean, frankly speaking, <laughs> they all do, but like this guy is pretty cool. Really light coloring. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, buddy, easy. This is why these animals are not handleable. This is just out of necessity. All right. Next, we'll do these. Here is a lovely female. Look at this girl. Oops. Where are you going? This one is just gorgeous. Okay, let's get her in her home. That way. There you go. Next, we have the male. Perfect. This guy looks really cool. Check him out. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right. There you go. Go ahead. Very good. Super dark. All right, well, here's Pumpkin. So I actually want the female that's being housed with him to go in here, not him. So the next gecko we're gonna do here is Pumpkin. Usually does a lot of leaping, but he's a gorgeous leaf tail. Aren't you, buddy? All right. Okay. Here we have another really nice male. Beautiful male Fantasticus. We'll put him in, right, buddy? Perfect. Next we have a very nice female. I've had this girl for a number of years. I got her as a wild caught juvenile. I raised her, she's about Three or four. She's actually probably one of one of, one of my feistiest fans. The only one that's really willing to actually bite you. Just super weird. But with that being said, don't want to stress her more than I did just there. So I'll let her be. I really like this one. It's really cool looking. Are you in shed? Yeah, you might be actually. <laughs> this was just a younger male. Really dark. Beautiful coloration. You're okay, buddy. Next, we have another very nice male. Really like the look of this one. Super beautiful. All right, bud. Come on. You're okay. He has a really cool white spot on him as well, which I find super neat. But yeah. Hi, buddy. Welcome to your home. You're okay. There you go. All right, guys, and the last one we have here is another male, and he has a really cool tail. Hey, buddy. He is a bit of a jumper, this one, so hopefully we'll get him in here nice and easy without too many complications, but check out this boy. Pretty cool, eh? Hey, buddy. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay guys, so you're probably all wondering why on earth I would choose to move all those leaf tail geckos into bin enclosures. Allow me to explain. In the last year, I found that I've had a few leaf tail geckos that weren't actually thriving in the bioactive enclosures. You may also recall that I took in six leaf tail geckos last December that have been in quarantine bins this whole time. Funny enough, those animals are thriving, ovulating, you name it. And if you think about it, the way they're being kept is a lot more, well, obviously sterile for one, um, pretty basic and drier than in the bioactive enclosures. 
Hi, Sabzi. <laughs> hey, buddy, you want to come out, don't you? I recently have come to speculate that these animals may actually like less humidity than we make them seem to. The only health issues I'm having with any of my leaf tail geckos are coming from those kept in bioactive vivaria. Ironically, the ones that are in the bins are ovulating and laying duds, while the ones that are in the naturalistic vivaria, for the most part, aren't. So we're already finding that overall it's safe to assume and correlate that the animals that are being kept slightly drier but offered a water dish and misted nightly are doing better than the ones that are in a more humid and moistened environment. I always like to make people aware that as beautiful and aesthetically pleasing as bioactive vivaria are, the benefits of the whole janitorial crew and such, there are cons to doing bioactive. Primarily, if you ask me, it's the inability to successfully clean the enclosure. Now, allow me to explain. I use this kind of gross analogy. If you were to, let's say, take a number two, if take a poop, you wouldn't go and spray vinegar water on your hands and wipe them off and continue about your day now, would you? No, I didn't really think so. <laughs> you probably want to wash your hands thoroughly for the sake of your health and hygiene. <laughs> Now, with a bioactive enclosure, you don't have the opportunity to simply remove your plants and rinse them off with a disinfectant solution like chlorhexidine or anything like that. Whereas if you were using plastic plants and paper towel, you can really be um, meticulous about your cleaning and ensure that the animals are always in a very clean environment. Now yes, bioactive again is wonderful and I love bioactive enclosures and if you're if you're properly cleaning the enclosures and maintaining everything, they can be super rewarding. But it goes without saying that right now I am having some minor problems with my leaf tail geckos and how do I put this? The practicality and effectiveness of keeping and breeding these animals at this point has to be worth more than the aesthetic of how I'm keeping them. So I've made the hard decision to tear down all the bioactive enclosures and replace them with fake plants and vines and paper towel. And then I'm also going to have small little containers in each enclosure that houses a pair or female gecko that'll contain a small amount of soil, maybe some moss dressing, and then leaf litter over top of it so that they have a very selective spot to lay eggs should they choose to breed. So guys, there you go. We now have all 18 of my satanic leaf tail geckos set up in bin enclosures. The next step that we're going to be taking is getting fecal samples from a large group of them, putting them together and bringing this to Dr. Brown, my vet, to examine and do fecal testing. From there, if he finds that there are any parasites, the likely ones to find would be pinworms, coccidia, then they'll be treated for those parasites with medication. Once that's been done, the animals will be moved back into the same enclosures. However, by that point, I'll have torn them down and set them up with fake plants, paper towel, and designated laying bins. So everything will be super sanitary, generally speaking, more dry, and I hope that that is going to fare well for them. That will be sort of a part two to this. I'm not certain when that video will be done, but at the very least, you now know that's what I'm doing. And yeah, so stay tuned to see the next part of this, I guess, how do I put it? Spearheading journey to figure out the leaf tails. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys would like to see next as far as content or if you have any questions about what's happening here at the leaf tails. Always happy to engage in a conversation with you guys. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all in another video again soon. Take care everybody. And if you want to see more videos about my leaf tails, check out the link up above to the playlist. Bye guys. See you Friday.